Hello everybody and welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Sim news video. Today's news video is filled to the brim with a diverse collection of Microsoft Flight Sim news. So whatever type of aircraft you're interested in, it may very well be in this video. Without further delay, let us get right into it. Kicking it off with news from Just Flight, they took to their Facebook page to announce that they're working on the Avro Vulcan for Microsoft Flight Sim, I believe by using a previous model of X-Plane 11. We have 10 screenshots of this Vulcan in early work in progress, and I have to say it does look very nice. Now this is one of my favourite aircraft in real life, I've been to many museums where it's at and I always turn my head upwards to marvel at this beauty it is a really nice aircraft of course military planes in microsoft flight sim are always going to be an acquired taste of course class flight have got a lot on their plates at the moment from the fokker f28 to the afro rj to the tomahawk to bluebird simulation 757 who they're working in partnership with that means that you probably won't see the vulcan until the middle of 2024 my personal prediction and for those of you on xbox it is the plan to bring the avro vulcan onto their pending wasm support the screenshots are very nice and I've linked the Facebook page down below but that's all they are at the moment, just screenshots. They are absolutely stunning but of course we need more information before we can make any judgments or conclusions. It will be payware and as I said coming to both PC and Xbox when applicable. I am really excited for this one. Moving over to Simwork Studios and we move over to a kit aircraft from the Avro Vulcan to a tiny homemade aircraft. The Vans RV-10 has been released and is available right now from the Simworks website for 15 euros. Of course with Simwork Studio you can always expect the best. I own both their Floatiac and Kodiak and they are simple joys to fly, featuring a highly detailed 3D model as you can see, alongside five liveries and integrated Sky for Sim NG tablet support. This is a wacky little aircraft. Luckily, no assembly is required. Simwork Studios have kindly built it for you. I think it would be very cool to have a kit aircraft. Maybe if I ever walk into loads of money, I might pick one up. But yes, for a little aircraft, it looks to pack a punch. I haven't got it myself, but if you have, leave your thoughts down below. Simwork Studios, they never really miss. Their products are always very good, so I would recommend you check it out on their website. Now we move over to the 757, I did tell you there's plenty of different aircraft in this video. EH Aviator, or however you pronounce his channel name, has published a 2 minute long video on his YouTube channel explaining some of the more unique features of the 757. Now quite nicely, the guy who did this video, he is a 757 and 767 pilot in real life. It's always fantastic when real life pilots bring their expertise over to a development team. And he explains some of the more unique features of the 757. As I've said, I would recommend you check out the video. You can find a link to that down below. You can definitely learn a lot of this video. I, for example, learned that the 757 wasn't shipped with taxi lights as standard. It was an optional extra. News to me, it's a pretty cool fact. We also get a look at the Rolls-Royce RB211 engines, which can produce 43,500 pounds of thrust, which is around 20 imperial tons. It is an overpowered flying pencil at the end of the day. And we also get a look at an interesting panel known as the P62 control panel, that this is located to the side of the forward landing gear and it basically allows engineers, ground engineers, to shut down the APU in the event of an APU fire. Now while textures aren't as good um, as the rest of the aircraft, you know they're very pixelated, very blurry, it does show some attention to detail. I don't imagine you'll be able to press this button in the sim to shut down the MP APU, but if you can, that is very, very intriguing. All in all, the 757, 200 and 300, which is set to be released on Microsoft Flight Sim as payware for Xbox and PC, is set to be pretty realistic. Bluebird simulations have been honest off the cuff and have said that this is not set to be a 100% quote, 
study level aircraft. They're aiming for high fidelity, but they understand uh, for the development team of their size, it's not possible, and therefore they just want to make it as high quality as possible. I respect the honesty there, and that is why I'm very excited to see this project develop. The idea that they're also working in partnership with Just Flight does push me on a bit when they're working with a reputable developer like that. It means they've got some good backing behind them. Do go check out the two minute long video released on YouTube on the 31st of January. I would recommend it a great insight into some of the more unique features of the Bluebird Simulations Boeing 757 for Microsoft Flight Sim. Also be sure to subscribe because I'll keep you up to date with what is my favourite Boeing airliner. Now let's move over to the final news. Robert Redazzo has released a new development update on the PMDG forums. Where else? This is from the 3rd of February 2023 and it gives us a load of information across the PMDG world. First off, kicking it with the 737-900, we finally have a planned release date. The final variant of the 737 Next Generation family by PMDG it should be released sometime after 1800 Zulu on the 7th of February 2023. Of course, this took a bit longer than planned. The PMDG team did, I believe, want to release this in January, but they're now happy with this aircraft, so release is not too far away. To talk about pricing, he does say pricing is expected to land somewhere between the 600 variant and the 700 slash 800 with final pricing set to be announced at release time now my personal prediction here taking into account that the 600 variant is sold for 35 us dollars and the 700 800 variants sold for around 70 us dollars each i imagine we'll be looking at 50 us dollars for the 900 variant I'm very, very secure with that prediction. 50 is a nice round number and pretty much bang in the middle of those two. So I imagine that's what it will be. The package will include both the 737-900 and 737-900 extended range with both blended winglets or split scimitar winglets. So you're sort of getting two for the price of one there. Of course, as the 900 is released concurrent with the release of that, there will also be an update to the 600, 700 and and 800 series airplanes. This is this PMDG fashion in order to keep all the four planes together in sync. These updates will be released and they'll be focusing on smoothing out some annoyances, bug fixes and improving airplane ground handling. Now I can hear that on the tip of your tongue. I can hear you asking in the comments, where is the EFB? Where is the Universal Flight Tablet? It's been delayed um, numerous times now to the point where PMDG aren't providing an exact release date anymore. They've clearly encountered some issues. Now the problem seems to be from what Robert is saying is just the fundamental code of the iPad, the EFB, the C++ code behind it. And it does mean that an external application will have to be used in order to get it working, which I don't believe was the original intention of PMDG. They wanted everything in SIM, but it does seem now that in order to get an EFB working, they will need to have some sort of external application, much like FlyBowire's uh, SIM Bridge and the one with Phoenix as well, although I've forgotten the name of that, so I do apologise. All in all, while the delayed release of the EFB, the rolling delayed release, I should say, is somewhat annoying, I don't think it ruins the experience somewhat. It is just a bit inconvenient. It does mean, of course, you'll need to head outside of Microsoft Flight Sim to complete performance calculations. But aside from that, I don't think it is too much to ask. I don't think it ruins the experience, it's just not optimal. And with that, there is all your Microsoft Flight Sim news. If you did enjoy, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. It really does mean a lot. For me today, that is all. I'll see you around. Bye-bye.